To set up late fees and the past due schedule, you will first go to Company and then Setup. Click on the Charges section. In this particular screen, this is where we create literally every charge that could be added on someone's account. When we're specifically talking about late fees, SiteLink has a default of five late fees. Late fee, late fee number two, three, four, and five. You can highlight each of those fees and click edit on the right hand side. For example, if our late fee was to be $10, we would put in the amount of 10 here. Do we have tax? If we don't have any tax associated with it, leave it as zero. When does it start? Leave the start date in the past so that it will move forward and go on to people's accounts. We'll want to mark that it's currently used. An important point to know is that changing charge defaults affects new tenants. Late fees are automatically created for unpaid rent after the starting date. In other words, late fees go on automatically. You don't have to click a button for it to do so. It will just do that. If your late fee was $10 here and everyone was charged $10 going forward, if two years down the road, for example, you want to change this to now be 15, this would affect only new tenants. Your previous tenants would still be 10. They could be edited. They could also be made to be 15. But by default, whatever you have as the person's late fee when they first move in will stay with them unless you change it later. This only affects new tenants. To change existing tenants, that would be done in the company utilities screen, edit tenant fees. While we're still in this late fee screen, some customers will use a percentage late fee. If you use a percentage late fee, then put that amount here in terms of the percentage. The percentage is based on the number that you put here. So if you put in the number 10, this is 10%. Do you have a minimum late fee applied? If someone owes you a penny, do you charge them a late fee? For many customers, that is the case. But think about that. For some customers, they may charge or need to owe at least $5 before someone's charged a late fee, or $10, whatever the case may be. If you have a minimum, put in that amount here. And if you're going to use a percentage of rent, you need to check this option. Late fee is a percentage of rent. By default, we're going to have a fixed fee. Click OK to save. We have five different automatic late fees. You might not use five. You might just have one that goes on every month. You might have one and two. Just edit the ones that you potentially use here. If you have other fees that may go on someone's account, like a preliminary notice fee or any fee you can think of, come in here and click Add to create those fees. This is step one of our past due process. In this particular case, with late fees, we've put in what the amount is. In order to dictate when those late fees will go on the account, that is done in a separate screen called Past Due Schedule. So when we close this screen down, you'll see an option that says past due schedule here. Click on past due schedule. This is where we determine what is going to happen when people are late in the system and when it happens. So this could be putting a lock on someone's unit, what we call overlocking, putting a late fee on someone's account. This could be a, a notice. It could be a notice and a fee or just a fee itself. We could start with a gentle reminder notice and go all the way up to and including an auction. All that is done through this past due schedule. Many of the events are already here and you just have to edit them for example gate lockout if we highlight gate lockout and click edit we're changing the day that it happens if it's five days past due on five days past due SiteLink is going to talk to your gate software to lock them out of the gate you're not creating a new event and calling a gate you must edit the gate lockout event that's the specific event that's going to talk to your gate software for overlocking that is another specific event overlocking is going to tell you who needs to have a lock put on their unit. So again, we'd highlight overlock, click edit on the right hand side and put in the days. When does this happen? If it's 30 days past due, put in 30. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's 10 days past due. We can use the options here to change the day. And when they're 10 days past due, it's going to prompt you on the reminder screen to put a lock on someone's unit. Now some events are automatic. Locking someone out of the gate, that just happens. You don't have to click a button to, to make that work. Same thing with late fees. If we highlight late fee number one, in the preceding screen, in the charges screen, that's where we determine what the late fee was. It was $10. But when we highlight this event here, we click edit, we'll see that we're going to be putting late fee number one on when they're 10 days past due. And what's associated with it? The late fee. 
We're saying in this event that the late fee is going to happen when people are 10 days past due, and the late fee amount was created in the previous screen in the charges section. That's where we determined what the actual late fee would be. There are other options in here, whether or not we put this to residential customers or residential and commercial. The default is both. And typically, you're going to be a monthly billing, and is this used at this site? check that. If it's not checked to be used at this site, it will not happen. By default, the late fees are every month. If they're late on month one, they're charged a late fee. If they're late on month two, it's going to charge them a late fee also. However, if we check this option here that says one time late fee, apply the first month tenant is past due, that is going to happen one time. And it will not charge them another late fee unless they pay up and then they become late again. We have a daily late fee option where it could charge them every single day. It just depends on what your options are. Typically, you would have it recurring. Click OK to finalize the process. Same options would happen for late fee number two all the way up to late fee number five. If we highlight the use column, any event that you see an X with, that is what's going to actually happen on your account. So we have default events that are set up. You may not use some of them. For example, you may not use late fee number five. Well, if late fee number five does not have an X under the use column, it's not going to happen on your site. So it's very important to recognize what does have an X, what is marked to be used, because that's what's literally going to happen at that location. So in this particular database, we have a gate lockout, five days past due, late fee at 10 days past due, past due notice, overlock, and then an auction event. For a notice, when you highlight an event and click edit, in this particular case, the fee is blank. So when the past due notice goes out at 30 days past due, no fee is going to be applied. But we're choosing what letter that we want to have on the account. So in this case, it's the past due notice. There's a subsequent screen known as form setup in the setup screen where you can edit what the notice typically looks like. But in this case, we're just choosing what is the notice that's going to be printed when this person is 30 days past due. If we wanted to, we could choose a fee also. So maybe we have another fee. I'm just going to choose convenience fee to quickly put that on there. So if I chose convenience fee, now convenience fee typically would be that you're charging a fee for someone using a credit card. But just to prove the example here, when I'm printing the past due notice, it's also going to put this convenience fee on when the notice is printed because they're both set up in this event. So we can either leave it blank and just the notice happens at 30 days past due or we could have a fee here and the fee and letter go on at the same time. When we're in the different events, uh, many of the events will allow you to choose different delivery methods. So for example, you would not have a delivery method for a late fee that just goes on the account you would not have a delivery method for gate lockout that's just sending when someone's gonna be locked out of the gate but if you're sending a notice how do you want it to go out do you want to email it do you want to email and print would you like it text messaged would you like all three would you like mail service would you like registered mail there's different choices depending on what's chosen determines what's going to happen so in this case I'm, I'm going to be connecting with them multiple ways but maybe I just want the past due notice to be sent by text. If so, just check SMS. The last option that I wanted to mention in terms of setting up past due events are what are called prerequisite events. Normally you would not have a prerequisite event set up when you're setting up a past due schedule item, but recognize that if you had an event that something must, hap must happen before this one does, then choose a prerequisite event. So for example, typically you want to be diligent about processing your events when they happen. When someone's 20 days past due, you send this notice. When someone's 30 days past due, you send this other notice. And your state or your area says that you must have 10 days in between these two notices going out. Well, that's normally not an issue because you're printing again the notice on 20 days and another notice of 30 days. But what if for some reason you didn't print that notice on 20 days? You were not diligent about printing it when it should happen. And you decided to print that notice when they were 21 days past due. It came up on the 20th day. It came up in your reminder screen to process it. But for whatever reason, you did not process it. Well, SiteLink is going to come up on the 30th to process the second event. Now you haven't given your 10 days. You've only given 9 days because you did not process it when it was supposed to happen. Typically, again, you're going to process it when it should happen. But if you want to, you could say, I need to make sure there's 10 days. So if I am not diligent about processing the event when it should happen, I'm going to double check myself and put in a prerequisite event. So if it just happened to be that the overlock 
event was 20 days past due. If I have 10 days as the prerequisite from the overlock event happening to the past due notice, then it's going to make sure it's 10 days. So again, the default would be 20 days past due and 30 days past due in this scenario. But if I waited till the 21 days past due, but I had a 10 day prerequisite, once this was processed, then 10 days later, which would be 31 days past due, this event would happen. So just be aware that it's like a secondary check on yourself that if it is stated that you must have this many days between rather than you typically would send it 20 or 30 days but you must have 10 days in between and if you don't then there's going to be an issue then that's when you bring a prerequisite into play.